Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on opioid receptors. Nomenclature The new nomenclature for the Mu or OP3 receptor is MOP. Endogenous ligand is beta endorphin, endomorphin 1 and 2, leu and met and kephalin and dynorphin. MOP receptors are located peripherally at sites of inflammation, pre- and postsynaptic neurons in the spinal cord, peri-aqueduct grey matter, limbic system, caudate putamen, thalamus, and cerebral cortex. The new nomenclature for kappa or OP1 receptor is the KOP receptor. Endogenous ligand for this receptor is dynorphin, beta-endorphin, leu and met and kephalin. KOP receptors are located at the nucleus raphe magnus in the midbrain, hypothalamus, and spinal cord. The new nomenclature for the Delta or OP2 receptor is DOP. Its endogenous ligands are DU and MET encephalins, beta endorphin, and dynorphin. DOP receptors are located at the olfactory centers, cerebral cortex, nucleus accumbens, caudate putamen, and the spinal cord. The new nomenclature for the orphan or ORL1 receptor is NOP. Endogenous ligand, orphanin FQ or nociceptin. It is located in the nucleus raphe magnus, spinal cord, and afferent neurons. Endogenous ligands for opioid receptors The endogenous opioid system consists of several families of opioid peptides that act at opioid receptors, which includes endorphins, which are derived from proteolytic cleavage of pro-opio melanocotin, and caffelins, which are derived from proteolytic cleavage of pro-encephalin, it includes leucine and methionine encephalins. Dynorphins, which are derived from proteolytic cleavage of pre-pro-dynorphin. Nociceptin, derived from pro-nociceptin or orphanin FQ. It is a ligand for ORL1 receptor. The N-terminal amino acid is phenylalanine rather than tyrosine, and this probably confers selectivity for the ORL1 receptor. Endomorphins includes endomorphin 1 and 2. It has several differences with other opioid peptides. Endomorphins are tetrapeptides rather than pentapeptides or larger peptides. The second and third amino acid in the skeleton of endomorphins differ from glycine. Endomorphins have a primary amide functional group at the C-terminus. Endomorphins has the highest affinity and a remarkable selectivity for the MOP receptor of all known mammalian opioids in the opioid peptide family. No precursor peptide or gene has been identified for endomorphins. Similarity of endomorphins with other opioid peptides. Endomorphins have the tyrosine and phenylalanine residues present in other opioid peptides. At least 15 endogenous opioid peptides have been discovered, which vary in length from 5 to 33 amino acids. They function as neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, and neurohormones. Encephalins, dynorphins, and endorphins have either the met or leu encephalin pentapeptide skeleton at their end terminus. This is crucial for analgesic activity at opioid receptors. The remaining peptide chain that differs between encephalins, dynorphins, and endorphins determines the affinity for different opioid receptors as mentioned above. It is probably by chance that the opium poppy synthesizes morphine, which structurally resembles the tyrosine residue present in some endogenous opioid peptides, such as beta-endorphins, encephalins, dynorphins, and endomorphins. Roles of the endogenous opioid system It is important in regulating responses towards pain, pleasure, emotions, and stress. It is involved in the modulation of thermal regulation, breathing, neuroendocrine function, GI motility, and immune responses. Examples of analgesia driven by the endogenous opioid system include stress-induced analgesia, placebo-induced analgesia, and conditioned pain modulation. Stress-induced analgesia is implemented by the same higher brain centers bearing MOP receptors and occurs during stressful conditions. For example, Soldiers do not feel pain initially after sustaining wounds during the heat of battle, 
as the endogenous opioid system is activated under stressful conditions. Regarding placebo-induced analgesia, the reduction of pain resulting from an expectation of pain relief is caused by activation of the endogenous opioid system, which is shown by fMRI and PET scans in the brains of subjects receiving placebo, described as an analgesic. Condition pain modulation, also known as diffuse noxious inhibitory control, is a condition in which pain arising from a noxious stimulus applied to one part of the body is decreased by application of a second remote noxious stimulus, i.e. pain inhibits pain. CPM is caused by activation of descending inhibitory pathways by higher brain centers. Appendadol is an opioid that induces analgesia through activation of descending pathways. Opioid receptors belong to the G-protein, GI or G0 coupled family of receptors. G-protein coupled family of receptors are a large protein family of receptors also known as metabotropic receptors found in cell membranes. These receptors has an extracellular N-terminal and intracellular C-terminal and consists of seven transmembrane domains. G-proteins are guanosine nucleotide binding proteins. They form a part of the GTPase enzyme family. They are bound to the intracellular surface of GPCRs. Subunits of G proteins include alpha polypeptide subunit, which binds to GTP, beta and gamma polypeptide subunits, which anchor the G protein inside the cell membrane. Mechanism of action of G protein couple receptors. Number one, GDP molecule is bound to the alpha subunit. Alpha subunit is bound to the beta gamma unit. Number two, binding of the ligand to the GPCR activates it. Number three, GDP is replaced by GTP. Number four, GTP activates the G protein. Number five, alpha GTP subunit diffuses away from the GPCR to interact with effector proteins. The effector protein target is different for each type of G protein. Number six, alpha subunit hydrolyzes the GTP to GDP once the interaction with the effector protein has occurred and a phosphate molecule is released. G protein complex then binds with the GPCR again and the cycle repeats. In addition to their coupling to second messenger systems mentioned above, G proteins can also be directly coupled to rho kinase systems and ion channels. G protein coupled receptors are involved in cellular signaling and signal transduction cascades for many hormones and neurotransmitters. Action produced from these receptors are typically indirect, slow, complex, prolonged, and widespread. Opioid receptor activation results in inhibition of intracellular adenyl cyclase via G protein coupling. This results in decreased cyclic AMP. Hyperpolarization of cell membrane occurs due to opening of postsynaptic potassium channels. Increased potassium conductance results in hyperpolarization of the cell membrane. The cell becomes less likely to fire action potentials and there is reduced neuronal excitability. Opioid receptor activation also results in inhibition of neurotransmitter release by inhibiting the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels. Other actions include activation of mitogen-activated protein kinase, extracellular signal-regulated kinase, protein kinase C, and P13K AKT. Although generally speaking, opioids produce inhibitory cellular effects, opioids also increase the activity of some neuronal pathways. Opioids increase excitation of projection neurons by suppressing the activity of inhibitory interneurons that tonically inhibit the projection neurons. Unusual features of opioid receptors compared to other G-protein coupled receptors. There are more types of endogenous opioid agonists 20 or more compared to the number of type of opioid receptors, which are only 4. The more common pattern is the number of types of receptors outnumber the number of types of endogenous agonists. For example, serotonin is a single mediator interacting with many receptors, about 14. Another unusual feature is all 4 opioid receptors coupled to the same type of G-protein Opioid receptors therefore activate the same spectrum of cellular effector mechanisms. 
Other G protein receptor families typically couple to different types of G proteins and thus give rise to different cellular responses, for example, muscarinic receptors. The third unusual feature is MOP receptors are claimed to exhibit bias. Bias refers to a phenomenon where different ligands acting on the same opiate receptor can elicit different cellular responses and differential receptor trafficking. G-protein bias MOP receptor ligands are claimed to demonstrate a reduced side effect profile in comparison to morphine which is unbiased. Distribution of opiate receptors Opiate receptors are distributed widely throughout the central nervous system as shown below in the table. Endogenous ligands active at opiate receptors function as neurotransmitters, neuromodulators and neurohormones. Opiate drugs exert their effects via complex interactions at various receptors at different sites. Due to the wide distribution of opiate receptors, drugs acting on them produce wide-ranging effects, some of which are desirable and some are not. Although all four types of opiate receptor mediate very similar effects at the cellular level, it is the anatomical distribution of different opiate receptors across the CNS that causes different behavioral responses when each type of receptor is activated. Some opiates or their metabolites also act on non-opiate receptors, for example, methadone acts at the NMDA receptor. Cellular effects For MOP receptors, Analgesic actions of morphine and most other opiates is related mainly to agonist activity at the MOP receptor. Analgesic effects are mediated by MOP receptors located at supraspinal, spinal and peripheral regions. Most are located supraspinally. Other effects of opiates are also related to activity at the MOP receptor, which includes respiratory depression, pupillary constriction, reduced gastrointestinal motility, euphoria, sedation, and physical dependence. Regarding physical dependence, inhibition of adenylocyclase and MAP kinase ERK activation by opiate receptors may mediate the long-term adaptive changes that occur in response to prolonged receptor activation and which may underlie the mechanism of physical dependence. Activation of MOP receptors has an overall inhibitory effect and results in inhibition of adenylate cyclase opening of potassium channels, causing hyperpolarization of postsynaptic neurons and reduced synaptic transmission, and inhibition of voltage-gated calcium channels, causing reduced presynaptic neurotransmitter release. Next, we move on to KOP receptors. These receptors have more spinal and peripheral than central analgesic effects. Analgesic effects are mediated by these receptors located at spinal and peripheral regions, other effects of opiates are also related to activity at the KOP receptor, which includes pupil constriction, reduced gastrointestinal motility, dysphoria and hallucinations, and sedation. DOP receptors have more spinal and peripheral than central analgesic effects. Analgesic effects are mediated by DOP receptors located at supraspinal and spinal regions. Other effects of opiates are also related to activity at DOP receptors, such as respiratory depression and reduced gastrointestinal motility. NOP receptor is the most recently identified. Although the NOP receptor has a high degree of amino acid sequence homology, more than 60% towards MOP, KOP, and DOP receptors, naloxone does not bind to NOP receptors. NOP receptors are involved in various processes, such as inhibition of calcium channels and increased cellular potassium efflux, Analgesic effects are mediated by NOP receptors located in the spinal region. Anti-opioid effects mediated by NOP receptors located at supraspinal regions, impairing of learning, and catatonia. Sigma receptor is not considered to be a true opioid receptor. It was originally postulated in order to account for the dysphoric effects produced by some opioids, such as anxiety, hallucinations, and nightmares. It is determined that these dysphoric effects results from drug-induced block of the NMDA receptor channel pore, an effect that is also produced by ketamine. Novel sigma receptors have now been cloned and characterized, which includes the sigma-1 and sigma-2 subtype. Sigma receptors are not structurally related to other receptor types, 
Little is known about the physiological role of sigma receptors. They have been suggested as novel drug targets for psychiatric disorders. These are my references. Thank you.